Nice. Cool, man. How's that? I love it. We'll post it and, like, yeah, check these guys out. Good deal. Well, uh, yeah, let's get this in before the door prices yes, go down. Yes, I agree. Totally. All right. Um, we typically are solely New England, but mm -hmm. uh, we met a brother of ours. Uh, this is uh, Josh Larson. He's with Primitive Patriot Outdoors yep. out of New York. Yes. Uh, we're about 60 miles south of Buffalo. Um, we're located in Randolph, and it's it's a really small farm town. Um, our big thing is we love our, our fisheries on Lake Erie, but we also have some amazing hunts. And um, we were talking before that even though, you know, you got New York's almost like its own region in a way. It's such yes. a big state, a lot going on in there. Yep. Um, a lot of differences, lots of similarities, but your guys' values kind of align with ours, supporting yes. local companies. Yep. Um, tell us about Primitive Patriot and what you guys do. So, uh uh, our mission statement is we're a network of outdoor enthusiasts trying to bring the, the outdoor community together through various media outlets and hosted events. Um, three years ago, I, I've always had this dream of bringing outdoor together. Um, and I got laid off from COVID and I said, let's do it. So I started this hobby on Facebook and I, I, we came up with a name, myself, my buddy Jeff Mason, who's my vice president. We're both veterans and we're like, all right, Patriot. Well, what goes with Patriot Outdoors? And then we came up with the name Primitive Patriot. So, um, you know, and then it just snowballed from there. You know, our, our first big event was a big buck contest. The first year we had 69 entries. So we're like, that's pretty sweet. Let's do a fishing tournament. And we started planning this walleye tournament and we had no idea it was going to blow up. So it's one of the top tier tournaments in Western New York now on Lake Erie. Um, the last, last tournament we had, we had to cancel it due to weather, unfortunately. But the first two years we did it, I mean, it was super successful. We had several states come, and we even had a team fly in from Wyoming to fish it. So it was, it was pretty cool. Um, and then we just kind of, from there, like, how do we make it better? How do we reach more people? So we started the YouTube channel, which is now on Roku, and we're looking to go bigger than that. Um, we did the Heroes Hunt, which is our non-for-profit portion, where a lot of the money from the, the Big Buck contest goes into funding taking these disabled veterans and first responders out on these awesome outdoor adventures. Incredible. Um, so this year we've had a farmer that raises red stags. They donated a red stag hunt to a veteran. So um, once we get back from the show, we'll start getting into that promotion where we, we go through all the applications. We find the most deserving vet, and then we take the top three vets, and then we draw like one of those vets out of a hat. So it's completely random but we have our most deserving vets in there and then we do like a second third prize for them like some gear and stuff like that mm. so you have like a board who reviews the yes. different cases yep. and stuff yep we all and, and it's all verified so when they get nominated whoever's nominating them or if they nominate themselves has to provide proof of service either like a va card or their dd214 or something like that so um that's something that we're really trying to build up so we also team up with like other companies as well to find veterans or find properties to hunt these veterans Gotcha. And, and I'm sure in doing all this, you're supporting local companities yes. in New York and yep. specifically probably vet, yep. veteran-owned like companies. One of our big sponsors is on our jersey. It's Alstrom Schaefer. They're an electrical company. It's who I work for. Okay. And, you know, I got to thank Dave Painter, the owner, for letting me come out and take off work to do all this fun stuff. Because, <laughs> thanks, Dave. Thanks, Dave. <laughs> <laughs> you know, um, because it is hard on the guys that I'm working with. Like, hey, I'm taking off work. Sorry. But they know, like, this is my my end state goal you know right. like i don't plan on being an electrician the rest of my life i want to be one of those names in the outdoor industry of what we're doing for sure so it's kind of where we're going you know and i was very relieved to see somebody with a fishing jersey here fishing's more my background hunting's new yep. to me yeah um, talk about what kind of fishing you guys all do and why it's unique to new york and why maybe a new englander might want to come out and check it out so new york where we live in new york is probably one of the best places in the world for fishing so you have Lake Erie, which is known for its walleye. There's over 5 million walleye in Lake Erie. There's probably more. Um, but you have, like, world-class walleye. So, I mean, you have your, your basic six, seven-pounders, like your, your big schools, but you find those 11, 12-pounders in that area. And where we live, we have our residential walleye, and then we also have the migration that comes up from Ohio starting toward the mid-June. So those fish come up there. Now you're fishing a whole new class of walleye. Um, you also got really big lake trout, steelhead. You go up to Ontario, you're fishing king salmon, brown trout, but then you have Chautauqua Lake, which is a smaller lake where we live, and it's world known for its muskie. I mean, they have some Dang. of the best muskie fishing in the world. Um, when you go to the Great American Outdoor Show and you find all these fishermen, you're like, where do you fish muskie? They all say Chautauqua Lake, New York. It's just world-class muskie. And we got big pike and stuff like that. Um, 
And another great fishery is the Allegheny Reservoir, which is right in our backwoods. It's the Allegheny Mountains, huge river, awesome fishing. And it's just, you have a lot there in Western New York. Um, I'm not familiar with Eastern New York, like the mm. Adirondacks, but like where we live, we got wine and cornfields. So like deer hunting is yeah. great there. Yep. Um, but we love our fisheries. Um, you know, Lake Erie is probably one of the most well-renowned walleye fisheries in the world. So, so in terms of walleye, there's a lot of tournament around walleye. Yes. Uh, and your fishing partner Joe's with us here. Yep. Or, uh, yep. Well, he's right around the corner. I yep. should Joe say. Joe Chapman. He's my brother, and he's my fishing partner. So. Oh, right. <laughs> yeah. Um, he, we just got him into it this year. So. Cool. Cool. What what's the what are the what's the term, tournaments like and what do you guys host so, for tournaments? So um, there's several different tournaments and styles of tournaments where we live. We host a there's three or four of them that are the same style. So you have a big fish Friday and Friday, which all the teams they bring in their biggest fish caught that day and wait for first, second, and place. For, we pay out first, second, and third, and it's 100% payout. So it's $100 for the big fish Friday and we split it 50, 30, 20 for first, cool. second, and third. So then Saturday is the main event. So all the teams line up right outside the harbor at 7 o'clock sharp. Gun goes off. It's a shotgun start. Nice. It's the coolest thing to watch. <laughs> all these boats race off into the, like, the distance and the horizon as the sun's coming up. It's really cool. Um, and then that's the main event. So they'll weigh in their top six fish, and we call it the biggest box. Um, that's my tournament, the Sunset Bay Walleye Shootout, which is literally the biggest walleye tournament in the country. They Damn. have uh, up to 200 teams. Mm -hmm. They're giving out over a half a million dollars. It's huge. So, you know, you might not catch a fish on Big Fish Friday, but after the Big Fish Friday, they are pulling names for like some amazing prizes. Like they give away five trolling motors. Really? That are like two, three thousand dollar trolling motors as a gift. So it brings in a lot of people. And then you have like tournaments that just want the plain Jane fishing tournament, which is cool. You don't have the big show and it's just you go in there, you weigh your fish, and you get paid. Um, there's also the South Towns uh, Walleye Association Derby, which goes on for a few weeks and you get a big fish you weigh it in um the bart's cove is a is a two-day tournament so it's a bart's cove duel you bring in three fish saturday bring fi three fish uh on sunday so there's different styles but there's tons of tournaments to go through cool there's been a little controversy in the world around walleye and unfortunately it, you know yes. it got it pretty much went nationwide in yep. terms of news um what would you say about the integrity of walleye fishing now would you say that people should still trust it is there still some yes. things to worry about um you know, unfortunately, with the Ohio guys, when they got caught cheating, um, everybody knows that cheating's been around. When there's money involved, people are going to cheat. But that mm -hmm. kind of opened the eyes up for a lot of us tournament directors to go, it's time to start cutting fish. So, like, a day after that happened, we announced any fish that's in getting paid, we cut the stomachs. And a lot of the tournaments are following in that suit. Nice. So, you know, what happens now is, is these guys bring in their coolers with these fish. We weigh them. That cooler stays at the stage. And we have a guard on it to make sure nothing alters them. So um, it in keeps the, the integrity the is in, the, in the rule book. Like, hey, if you're getting paid, you're getting your fish cut. If you want to try to earn um, and it, and it, you try to keep it as fair, but we also do polygraphs meantime, as well. So really? we hire an outside party. They come in. They do polygraphs for lie detectors tests. No so, shit. Like, you know, the bigger the tournaments, that's how we keep it legit. So any, anybody getting prize money is they're going through polygraph. a lie detector? Yep, they're getting a lie detector. Wow. Um, but we also pull two random teams. So you might not be getting paid and be like, hey, man, you're getting drawn. That keeps it like... I like a, that, that little control group there. Yes, yep. Um, unfortunately, uh, three weeks ago, we had another cheater at a tournament we were competing in, stuffing fish into fish. Um, mm -hmm. the, the person uh, caught some illegally undersized walleye. He cut the tails off and shoved them inside a large walleye. Wow. Um, fortunately, a couple of the anglers, when they were getting ready to weigh the fish, go, that doesn't look right. Mm -hmm. And before they even knew he was going to win or anything like that, they cut the stomachs open, and they're like, what's this? Right. And they looked at the fish lips, and there was clearly they've been hooked. So they did a big investigation, the next day they're like, yep, you, you've been cheating. Um, DEC came in, disqual you know, they confiscated his fish, and he's getting charged, unfortunately. Wow. Would you say that happened because of the the bigger news story that there was more like vigilance on things? Yeah, there's keep it fair uh, for in, in the people walleye, following the rules. Like I, I think in all fishing tournaments now there needs to be a lot of vigilance. Like mm -hmm. before metal detectors, lead weights, but now with the Ohio's because they had fish fillets in theirs, and then right. recently, recently tournament it's like guys are shoving organic materials into fish too, so it's not going to show up in a, in a, uh, a metal detector. Right. So that's why you know a lot of these tournaments are like you know. These are the tournaments that are bringing in dead fish. Like, we're going to gotcha. be keeping these fish and flaying them. 
Um, like the National Walleye Tournament, you got to keep your fish alive. Okay. So you start shoving stuff in there, you're going to kill them, and you're going to get points taken away. I wish we could do that in Lake Erie, but unfortunately, Lake Erie, a lot of the walleye are so far deep. Yep. Like you're catching them like suspended at 55 deep low. Wow. When you bring them up, they're going to die um, a lot of the times, so unless you have like a good live well. But a lot of the tournament rules is you can't have like a water bath. So let's say you have six live fish in a, in a live well, one dies, that dead fish has to get pulled out or it's considered a water bath. So you're, you're keeping it a dead fish in the water. I see. So we have like 40 different rules in our tournament mm -hmm. to keep that, as, you know, it's transparent, but in any situation that happens, like there's a rule for that. <clears throat> when you sign the waiver into our tournament, you've understood and read the rules and completely follow them. So that's why we've added a lot of things in there. And we try to keep it professional. Like the, the newer thing that's coming around, like with our tournament, which we like, is you all got to wear the same style shirt or t-shirt or something because like, now these tournaments are getting publicity. Mm -hmm. You want everybody to look as professional as possible. Nice. It's classy. Yep. Um, let's talk about walleye. We don't have walleye up here, but okay. rumor has it that once you go walleye, you never go back. Tell us about walleye fishing and uh, how you got into it and so, some of the strategy behind it. Like um, my neighbor, well, my old neighbor, his name is Marshall Stearns, an amazing captain out of Barcelona, New York. He's also pretty known for his crappy fishing. He used to win a lot of the crappy fish tournaments. He charters walleye. So we went out walleye fishing, and I'm like, man, dude, this is awesome. <laughs> yeah. You know, and I've always fished creeks and, and stuff like that, but not like Lake Erie, and I've never really had walleye. Um, and, man, once I got hooked, I was hooked. And it is one of the best-tasting freshwater fishes, in my opinion. Walleye is just that good. So um, there's several different te techniques for fishing walleye. I mean, if you're fishing creeks and stuff, you're probably jigging. Mm -hmm. um, <clears throat> Lake Erie, it's more like a trolling. Okay. So we have a 30-foot fishing boat, and we troll with – most tournaments are nine rods only, but if you have five guys in the boat, you know, you can fish with 15 rods. Mm -hmm. um, early on in the year, you're, you're fishing shallower because those fish haven't went deeper yet because of the water uh, temperatures. But as – summer comes on those fish are going out further they're going deeper so you can use mono with weights we use lead core okay like uh, suffix or something yeah yeah yep. so we use um suffix lead core yep. and it's the, it's five feet per color is the rule yeah so yep. we you know summertime we're using five colors seven color ten colors yep and you spread those out with those rods so we run planer boards to cool. keep your line spread out um, we also run dipsies, so that keeps your lines close to the boat, but makes your lines dive deeper. Yep. Um, rule of thumb is your shallower lines are on your outer boat, so when you need to pull them in, those shallow lines are they're going over your deeper lines, cool. not tangling up. Yep. Um, so there's a lot of different techniques. I mean, there's every every boat set up differently. These guys might run four dipsies instead of two. Um, they might run three downriggers. So we run two downriggers, a dipsy, and our planer boards. Nice. Um, how many more tournaments left in the season? This year for us, we got one more, and yep. it's a smaller tournament, so we're going to be doing a lot of jigging. It's on Chautauqua Lake. Um, it's my cousin's tournament. Um, he's a big fisherman out of Chautauqua Lake. His name is Dylan LaBarbera, and he owns Hooked on Fishing. Okay. And they're coming up in the world. Like, they're the young guys. they got the GoPros. Like, they're nice. really into it. They're really passionate about it, and we yep. love what they're doing. So we're going to be fishing his tournament and supporting it. He comes and does our – we helps out with our tournament, so in return we help him with his tournament. But what he's building is a young guy. Like, he's big on TikTok. You know, every time they're out, they're like, dude, we got a hog, man. You know, like, they're <laughs> yeah. all about it. So yeah. um, that's our last tournament because we start getting into hunting season right now in August. Like, we'll be in Colorado in two weeks. Once I get back from Colorado, I'm going straight to his tournament. Are you elk hunting? Yes, we archery hunt bull, uh, bull elk. So all right. I actually got one mounted I saw the, the elk booth. over there. Yeah, yeah. I was That was wondering. the last one that we got, and that's uh, it got mounted the night we were coming out here. Wow. So I picked up the U-Haul, had the booth loaded up. I was like, well, I'm picking up the elk, and he's going to hunt stock. <laughs> so, um, man, I, we love elk hunting. Like, I'm not a big turkey hunter, but elk hunting and turkey hunting kind of go hand-to-hand. -hand. With the calls, the bugles, you got to mm -hmm. read that bull's temperature and know if he's going to come in or not. Right. And if you mess up that pitch, he ain't coming in. Like, kind of like a turkey. You might know the call, but if you mess up one pitch, he's not going to come in. So Nice. So you're finding some time to hunt despite doing all the primitive. Yep. Um, yep. We, it, it's. Yep. I'm busy. Like I mean, I have my main job as an electrician, but the outdoor company keeps me like swamped. Um, so, but we find time, and it's cool. Is like I've created a company that. Oh, this hunting is a tax write off now because it's getting me in revenue. Yep, so it's yep. a tax write off. Bought a new gun. Tax write off. <laughs> yeah. So, 
it, it's, it's worked out. It's, I mean, for me, I love it. You know, I just love what I'm doing. If I didn't ever get money out of it or paid, I'd mm -hmm. still do it because I love it. It's a passion. Of course. You know, my thing was I served eight years in the Marine Corps. When I came out, I had anger issues. The outdoors is what calmed me down, going out in the outdoors, experiencing nature. I don't even have to hunt. If I'm out there in nature, I'm just calm, I'm peaceful. Mm -hmm. And we want to give that back to veterans, and that's why we kind of do a lot of stuff with our veterans. Has, uh, like, your experience that you, you, you just described, is that consistent with the, the guys you're taking out? Yes, yep. What have some, some of the testimonials been like? Well, um, their, our last veteran we took out, he was in a wheelchair, and he got injured, like, while he's home. So he did 14 years in the military, some in the Marine Corps, some in the Army, like, several combat tours. Like, the dude was just, he was angry got into drugs and stuff like that. Um, <clears throat> they started trying to get on the right foot. We took him out and, and like we brought him into the, the lodge. So it's a big lodge out in, in central New York, mm -hmm. all dedicated for people in wheelchairs. So we took him out, I mean, he's having fun. And we finally, the, well, the first time was crossbow. He got sick. We had to rush him to the hospital. He started having kidney failure. I'm like, dude, wow. He got healthy, rifle season, we brought him back out. Last minute of the hunt, like literally, you can hear the side-by-side -side coming up, this doe walks out and he, and he shoots her. Wow. And it was like, dude, thank God he got one. He's like, dude, and we're all crying. Of course. He's like, dude, man, I got her. So we get this doe back to the camp and he jumps out of the wheelchair, like pulls himself out. He's like, give me a knife, I'm doing it myself. And he guts, <laughs> he guts and does this deer by himself. I mean, his legs don't work. Mm -hmm. And he's throwing his pee bag over and he's freaking cutting this thing. And we're all looking at him like, dude, man, that's it. That was like the moment we're like, man, yep, 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 yep. Manergies, we call them manergies because, you know, you know, a little teary eye. You <laughs> yeah, know, we don't yeah. want to admit that we you know, get emotional sometimes, but you got to. Like when you see that, you're like, wow, there's people in this world that are able to do anything in the world, but they're lazy. And this kid that's in a wheelchair just got out and gutted a deer. Wow, that was that was huge for us. So um, we've had some, you know, some cool, just simple hunts. You know, we take a couple guys out for like pheasant hunting, mm -hmm. um, just getting them outside, out in the outdoors where they might not be able to do that because they don't know those connections. Mm -hmm. It's just an awesome experience. It's um, like a new mission, as they it say, yep. with uh, the BHA AFI. You yes, know, giving veterans uh, a new mission in yes. life. Yep. I mean, we also do it with first responders because, like, I've noticed I'm also a volunteer firefighter. Mm -hmm. There's not many programs out there that gives back to firefighters and police officers. So we also do that for first responders and police officers as well. So if we get, like, a, you know, hey, we got a whitetail hunt, okay, it's not really wheelchair accessible. So mm -hmm. we're like, all right, let's find a firefighter or a first responder to take out and take them out hunting as well to give them thanks for dedicating their time to our country. And it's got to be therapeutic to them, too. It is, too, yeah. yeah. Yep. Like, firefighters see a lot of stuff. You know, you go to an accident or a fire, sometimes it's not what you want to see. Mm -hmm. So sometimes they need a way to relax and unwind as well. Yeah, I work in the mental health field, and um, we get, you know, we get surveyed every three years by a, a bigger organization just to oversee us with different regulations. Yep. And the specific surveyor, he was um, a cop, but he realized a lot of his brothers and sisters in the, in the service we're having a lot of mental yeah. health challenges. So he became a, a therapist, actually. That's awesome. Um, and he started developing, you know, different uh, different programs and things for them. And But that was, it kind of opened my eyes. Like, these yeah. cops who keep it collected when they're yes. helping us with different things, they're yep. really going through a lot. And so, that's the thing people don't realize. Like, you know, uh, my sister's boyfriend is a cop. Some of the stuff that they see, it's messed up. Like, you know, you go into a home to, window, like, huge in our towns, heroin and meth and drugs. Mm -hmm. Oh, we got an overdose. Wow, you know, this mother just overdosed with her eight-year-old son watching. Right, that, the kids. That'll take a toll kids. on you after a while. Oh, yeah, absolutely. So, you know, we try to give something for these guys to go out in nature and experience what I had to experience, you know, calm, peace, collect. Like, there's a mm -hmm. spot in Colorado, I call it my spot. And everybody I take there, I'm like, sit here for an hour, you'll leave off this mountain changed. Just collect your thoughts, but you're up there, it's pure air. You can see for hundreds of miles, you're 12,000 feet up, and it's just like, God's beautiful creation. You know, we just love it there. It truly is God's country when you're up there in, in Colorado. So, that's, that's the that's the word on the street. Yep, that's that's why we love it. I mean, there's I haven't hunted Montana or Wyoming yet, but those are just great places too. How long have you been doing Colorado for? Seven years. Okay. This will be my seventh year going out. Nice. Sorry if you mentioned it already. <laughs> no, nope, I, I don't think we have, but yeah. no. Um, the reason we go is like we have friends there, and like when we first got there, they opened up their house to us. That Ron was making fun of me bugling, but he gave me his own personal bugle and taught me how to bugle. Nice. By the time I left that hill that first hunting year, 
I'm bugling and I'm calling an elk. Not many people's gonna do that. Why? Because all oh, us, we're gonna get the elk, you know? Nope, Dave was like, we wanna see you guys do good. And then like when I finally shot my first bull, the whole family's coming up the mountain, they're wow. giving me a hug, like, thank <laughs> you to the club, and it got emotional, and you're like, man. Then you actually look and you're like, wow, that's a big animal. <laughs> yeah, that's And no then you get at home and you're like, all right, two, 300 pounds of meat, that's amazing. That's, and that's why we, you know, it's another reason why we do it. I haven't paid for meat in years because <laughs> you get two doe tags in New York, you get a buck for rifle, a buck for archery, then we go to PA, you go to Ohio. Mm-hmm. So we got venison. And then you go to Colorado, and you're like, now you got the the, the filet mignon, the <laughs> yeah, outdoor the world, luxury the elk moins, the, yeah. and the back straps. And then with fishing, you know, our our tournament, a lot of these guys don't want their fish. So you get to take the walleye. Yep, we take the walleye and we, we donate it to like homeless shelters. Oh, nice. So we got like several big coolers, and the guys are like, hey, if you don't want them, throw them in the cooler. They go in the cooler. We keep some of them, and we do like a cookout for all of our volunteers, and then yep. we take some to like s- certain soup kitchens in the area. Does New York have that for a deer as well, for the, like, to feed the less fortunate? Yes. Um, I believe it's the Venison Coalition of Western New York. Um, and I met an actual Buffalo Bills player there a few years ago, Trent Murphy. Nice. He's no longer with the Bills, but yeah. we're friends on Instagram, and he's actually considered going to Africa with us next year. Dang. So we're like, that's pretty sweet. Like, what he did, he gave, like, you know, he's a huge outdoorsman. So he was doing this with... That was kind of like his charity that he was helping out with, yep. so it was pretty sweet. You know, it's, it, it's an awesome experience, and, uh, like, we follow Trent, and he's asking me if I knew veterans that needed service dogs because he's doing that now, and it's like, dude, that's awesome. He's doing the training? Yeah. So he's, wow. like, he's out of the NFL, but he's, like, big in the outdoors, and he's doing this for veterans as well. It's just the dude's such a down-to-earth guy, man. Like, I know we're in Massachusetts, so it's it's – Brady Patriots territory, but <laughs> you know I don't want to keep talking about the Bills. That's all good. But you know Trent Murphy brought his ten point buck into the Bills stadium in the end zone and was doing photo shoot. With it. I'm like, <laughs> I like that guy. That yeah. guy's sweet. I need to get to know so, that guy. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And so that guy's awesome. You know, and he's out of the NFL now. He used to play for I want to say the Redskins before he came to the Bills. Gotcha. But now he's out and he's like, every time I'm seeing him, he's hunting. I'm like, yes, <laughs> that's, that's awesome. That's a good so, life. Yeah, it is, it's a pretty sweet life. I'm like, man, one day I'll be there, too. <laughs> nice. So we're getting there. Um, we just did our first magazine article in Colorado. So okay. there's a, it's called Shout Out Colorado, and they just did an article on me about how I started this company, why we do this company, you know, what fuels us, and wow. like our business model. So I'm starting to get our name out there, which is kind of cool, and I'm hoping it keeps growing and growing, and one day Primitive Patriot Outdoors will be a household name everywhere. And that's the ultimate end goal because the bigger we get, the more veterans we can reach. Absolutely. Well, um, th- Josh, thank you for your service. Thanks yeah, for thank what you're you. doing now with Primitive Patriot. Um, the door prizes are coming up. Yeah, we need to get out there. So. Are there any um, last things you want to say about Primitive Patriot or the, shout out to the Huntstock guys or anything like um, that? I definitely want to thank you know thank the Huntstock guys for inviting us. You know, Porter, he got a hold of me. He's from our area. Um, he wanted me out here, so I was like, yes, let's do this. This is cool for us. Um, I want to thank you for inviting us on this podcast. You know, we'll definitely promote this, and I'll definitely start listening to it. Thank you. Um, and I also want to thank a lot of my staff members for Primitive Patriot Outdoors because without them, the company's nothing either. You mm-hmm. know, I'm I can't do everything, so having those guys help out with the tournaments and the organizing and calling my brother Joe Chapman over here, What's up, he's Joe? been a huge help. So I mean, I just got done moving out of my house into another house, and he was there every step of the way. He's over there driving my boat. You know, and, and we're getting him in it. We're making him a pro fisherman. He's starting to look He looks part. like a professional. He's got the <laughs> so, jersey and everything. So, um, yeah, just I want to thank all my staff and, you know, definitely thank the Huntstock staff. Like, we'll definitely be back next year. Like, this was an awesome show. Yeah, it's incredible what these guys pulled off and um, bringing everyone together. Yeah. You know, and like I said before, our company, it's mostly focused on New England, but, yep. you know, we're neighbors at the end of the day. Exactly. And we, yep. all, we have the shared value system yes. and uh, we have the same and mission. The, the only way that our way of life survives is if the small guys stick together. And that's how we feel. Like you gotta support each other and promote each other because the bigger we get, the more we can reach and, and keep this way of life going because in today's age, the world's against us. With the yep. gun laws, the second amendment, people not wanting this, yep. it's going away. You yep. know, like I remember when I was in school, kids weren't in school on opening day of hunting season. They were out <laughs> with their dads for youth or something. Now it's yeah, like it's like a state holiday. Yeah, now yeah. it's going away. Now yeah. you can find places to park in the woods, and you can't find anybody in the woods. So, you know, the last few years, you can see that the sport's kind of going away. It's dying. Mm-hmm. So we need events like this and, like, content creators, podcasts, get the word out there. Like, dude, it's not dying. It's let's, it's getting bigger now. Right. So and I think social media is it, it, sometimes it's bad, but in this case, it's getting it out there, and yes. you're getting a lot more people into it. Like women. 
now they're everywhere hunting and that's awesome because this used to be a male dominated sport and now you have all these women out there doing it like you know what we can do it too yeah. and a lot of them are doing it better than the men so it's awesome seeing that you know it's it's everybody's starting to get into it not just the men so um i definitely see this sport never dying and no one's going to come after us we're going to keep this going for generations to come amen man hell yeah all right everyone that's josh larson he's from primitive patriot outdoors out of new york give him a follow at primitive patriot Josh, awesome. thank you. Thank you very much. Thanks for having us. Shout out to Joe. <laughs> <laughs>